And I think, yeah, to definitely to, to, I guess, some of the companies credits that during this pandemic, some of them, you know, I think have come out with announcements and, you, you know, I think that you have to be, I would say, take a lot of these PR announcements with a grain of salt and really dive in, right? You know, I think Uber Eats, yeah. for example, announced that there were going to be no, you know, they were going to be charging delivery fees on local restaurants, but there are mm -hmm. still, you know, like multiple fees, you know, and, and different things going on, right? Yeah. And I think now that the caps are put in place, you're starting to see what happens as a result. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to lower demand. Yeah. And I think that what might be helpful too is maybe you and I can just walk through just a very simple example. I mean, if I order, let's say I'm a customer, right? And I order from a uh, sweet greens and let's for simplicity say that the, the cost of the salad and is, or let's say that you know, the cost of the salad is $10, right? Typically from there, what am I paying? I'm usually paying what a delivery fee and then a service fee and taxes and a potential tip to the courier. Does that sound right? Yeah, you're paying um, some delivery fee that gets subsidized by that commission that the restaurant's paying, right? And so for, you know, McDonald's and Sweetgreen and Chipotle, et cetera, all the big chains mm. that they want on there, um, that, you know, these these delivery platforms are losing money, mm -hmm. most likely on a lot of these orders. Got it. Um, which is why you see, like, you know, they're beating their sales, like, insane. Mm -hmm. The comps are up. Uh, like just some numbers, Uber Eats gross bookings are up 54% right. in Q1, but they're losing $300 million right. or Grub mm -hmm. bookings are up 9% losing $33 million mm -hmm. and they're going to lose 42 million. So, um, they're, they're losing money on the QSRs. They're making all the profit, uh, from some uh, of the, the little guys. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, they're I guess, not making any profit right. at the they're, end of the day. Yeah, at the end of the day. <laughs> so it sounds like they're really heavily subsidizing, you know, the high volume QSRs. And then for the mom and pops are sort of, you know, kind of taking the most from them. Right. So if my total, you know, if I'm as a customer, right, if I'm handing $15 over to uh, DoorDash, for example, and 10 of that goes to the salad and then $5 of that goes to the delivery fee and the service fee and, you know, the taxes, for example, there's also an additional tip. I think it's just interesting because at the end of the the day like you said right i mean there's you know what's unique about in this case is that there's a customer there's a restaurant and then there's also this third party app involved so it can get pretty confusing pretty fast and so i'm curious to get your take on you know i think most cities are sort of looking to this 15 to 20 percent fee cap model in general what are your thoughts on this good or bad idea i mean i think it's obviously much needed for restaurants i just think the problem is though, like let's take jersey city for example i saw a tweet the other day Mm -hmm. where the the restaurant was in Jersey City, so it had to, um, the customer had to pay an extra $3 than they normally would have had to, and the radius uh, for the restaurant was significantly reduced, so they were getting fewer customers. And this is a place it, where they cap the fees at 15%? Yeah. Okay. So... Um, this is kind of the problem. It's like, okay, right. you want us to operate, you know, basically, uh, the, you, you, you won't want us to make any money on these, these orders. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to basically optimize it for our drivers so they can, they, you don't have to drive out of their way right. to, to deliver something. And yeah, I think that's sort of at the crux of the matter. It, it's tough because you're sort of, you know, like, I think a lot of people are agreeing that these app companies are taking, too much, you know, too high of a commission, but at the same time, they're not even profitable, right? Like you said, Uber Eats yeah. is taking 30% and it's not like, you know, it's this greedy company. It's just, they're taking 30%, but they're still losing $300 million, which is kind of crazy to, right. to think right. about, right? I mean, if they were taking 50 to 60%, then they would just be breaking even maybe, right? Let's just call it round numbers. And, you know, I think that in, with these fee cap situations, you know, the, the end result is, you know, there are some negative effects. I, I guess I'm not convinced that they're a positive for really the anyone, the restaurant or the customer. I'm, I'm curious to know if you think there are any winners yeah. in these fee caps, because like you said, right, I, I think that when you cap the fees, basically what you're going to do to the company's perspective is they're going to say, OK, well, we still need to make that money. So we're going to charge the customer extra and we need our network to now be more efficient. So we're going to say, uh, you know, let's say a yeah. smaller delivery radius. So maybe the driver can batch two orders instead of, you know, mm -hmm. having to drive all over the place. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Are there any winners? Um, I mean, so are the, I guess are these fee caps? It sounds like they're not really working then. <laughs> uh, 
it just it just it's kind of a thing where we have to see how sensitive the consumer is because mm -hmm. like you're basically baking in the the cost the the full cost of delivery isn't transparent to the consumer today because they're paying right. you know a couple bucks on um in delivery fee um or it's a service fee uh and the restaurant is subsidizing some of it through their commission right yeah. and um now that that's been externalized, right? We can see that in right. that example. The question is, do consumers, even if on balance they're paying like you know the same amount, but it's just broken out yeah. better? You know, are they going to be, are they going to be like, you know what? I'll just get in my car and, and yeah. pick it up, or are they going to just cancel altogether? You know, yeah. uh, I think that's there's the jury's still out on that to, to really see what the kind of externalities are to the uh, on the consumer side. I mean, obviously it's it's great for restaurants because the numbers the mm. your margins are much better. Okay, you're right. <laughs> obviously when you have the fees, right? Um when you have a 15% it, cap on fees. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Because that's, you know, if you were going to do your DoorDash just Drive, <laughs> yeah, you 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 do, do DoorDash Drive and Chow now, you still would have to pay um that 15% to to DoorDash to just do the fulfillment and then right. the annual fee to Chow Now. Um, so this is a way for customers, for for, for restaurants to stay on these apps mm -hmm. amidst the p pandemic. It's a Band-Aid and it's obviously not gonna last. And um, another thing to add is that those, those caps not only um, will sustain through, you know, the emergency order mm -hmm. at the national level, but it will also, in the, continue for a three month period in New York after mm. just because it's ramping up sales yeah. is going to take some time. And, uh, you know, we're going to be feeling the effects of this for a while. Yeah. So, um, another thing to think about yeah. as well. And well, I think that's interesting.